Because of the poor shade tolerance of Bermuda grass, many Oklahomans turn to cool season perennial grasses for use in light and medium shades. The cool season perennial grasses that are best adapted are tall fescue, turf type tall fescues that are, that is, and also uh, Kentucky bluegrass. We suggest a mix of the two species in order to get a broader genetic base for better resistance to diseases that these grasses might face. Rather than talk about individual varieties, we'd like to talk about proper mixing concepts. The Cooperative Extension Service suggests the use of a tall fescue at 80 to 95 percent by weight and the Kentucky bluegrasses at 5 to 20 percent by weight in the mix. While perennial ryegrass can be used in some mixes, we generally don't recommend it because it doesn't persist as well as either Kentucky bluegrass or tall fescues. Also, we don't suggest these being used in full sun in most areas because of their higher water use rates. Within tall fescues, try to pick two to three improved modern varieties and at least one Kentucky bluegrass that has improved resistance to summer patch. We suggest that Oklahomans look at the National Turf Evaluation Program, or NTEP, website to see what varieties have performed best in Oklahoma. From year to year, varieties change, and even our seed sales folks within the state don't control the marketplace. It's the market in the Pacific Northwest and what's available in the marketplace that controls actually what goes on shelves. An important point concerning tall fescue is if you want turf type quality, choose turf type tall fescues. There are turf type and then there are forage type tall fescues. Turf type tall fescues are bred for improved density, a lower, more compact growth habit, and darker, greener color, which is what the consumer wants in a lawn. The forage type tall fescues are very large and robust and coarse and textured and more lighter green because the grazing animal actually doesn't care what color the uh, material is as long as it's nutritious from a forage standpoint. It's true that you can find the forage fescues at a much lower price, so don't allow price to be your sole factor that uh, influences your choice. You want to choose a good variety that stays in place for many years. Concerning timing of seeding cool season grasses, the fall is actually best. Once we get a break in temperature, usually some point in late September or early October, it's time to seed the tall fescues and the Kentucky bluegrasses. Concerning the spring, while it's an exciting time to get out and garden and seed the lawn, it is a second choice, but in some cases we know folks must uh, thicken up the lawn, and so it's understandable that a spring seeding may be needed. If you're going to seed in spring, try to get the material out in uh, by April 15th to April 30th. In some years with a cold spring it's possible to seed into May, but what happens with spring seedings is they oftentimes don't reach the maturity level that they need to make it through the summer, and so you have a loss of the stand in summer. In those cases you simply come back in the fall and try to thicken up the stand with a half rate. Concerning the seeding rates, typically with tall fescue we're looking at four to eight pounds per thousand. You'll use the upper end rates if you're working with a coated seed. If it's not coated, then you'll be looking more towards the four to five pound per thousand square foot range. You'll want to keep the soil moist for at least a month and then transition the grass into more deep and frequent watering. Both the cool season grasses Tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass do require irrigation throughout the summer. Uh, they are not a carefree grass, but they can lend themselves to giving you good vegetative cover in the shade. So think about use of tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass to give us good turf grass cover. Mm -hmm.